So you seem like a pretty nice guy. Don't believe it. You, 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 I, I was going to all these Muslim websites and you sound like the Antichrist himself. <laughs> <laughs> you seem pretty friendly. The Dajjal. <laughs> So why is it why is it that that all these Muslims don't like you? Well, I tell the truth about Islam. You know, slander, slander, in Islamic law is not lying about somebody. Slander in Islamic law is telling something about someone that they don't want known. Hmm. And so, slander in Islam is what I'm doing, even though everything I say is true. There is, of course, as you well know, in Islam, doctrine of deception. A doctrine of uh, deceiving unbelievers and making them think that Islam teaches or that Muslims in, in, in any particular situation believe something other than what they actually believe. And that there's a concerted effort in the United States to deceive the American people about the teachings of Islam in terms of the supremacist and violent aspects of Islamic teaching and the anti-women aspects of Islamic teaching. And so I come along and I quote Quran and I quote Hadith and I quote the biography of Muhammad, and I show that all these things, and, and Islamic law, and all these things are in there, and so they hate that. They can't stand light being shed on them. Hmm. So, what do you think is going on? Right now we have some really big issues happening in the media directly related to Islam. There was the Rifka issue, now there's the Fort Hood case. Where do you think everything's going? What's the trend of, of these recent current events? Well, I think there's an increasing assertiveness in terms of the violent arm of the Islamic Jihad, which is not the only arm of the Islamic Jihad. Uh, they clearly feel empowered by Barack Obama being president. Mm. And they think that uh, you know he is ramping down, scaling down anti-terror efforts. He doesn't speak about terrorism. He only speaks about Islam and Muslims in the most glowingly positive terms. And so they uh, clearly see, with the large number of foiled plots and with the uh, successful jihad attack at Fort Hood, that uh, now is the time to strike. That America is more vulnerable than it was under George Bush, and so they're taking advantage of that. And in terms of the uh, stealth jihad initiatives to advance the uh, agenda of Islamic law, advance aspects of Islamic law in the United States through non-terrorist means, I think they also have gotten the same signal and are being just as assertive. And uh, as Pamela pointed out at the rally, that uh, if this were any other kind of situation, a girl wanting an abortion and her parents opposed it, there would be no question of returning her to her parents. Mm. It's only because her parents are Muslim that this is even something that's on the table. So you're saying that the, the Islamic world here in the United States overtly and, and covertly are, are becoming more aggressive, and as a result of that, Islam is given special status privileges. Yes, uh, because the prevailing paradigm in the United States for government, for law enforcement, and for media is that uh, it's a racial issue, and as a, as a result of it being a racial issue, and the Muslims being non-white in this view, it is something that has to do with the victimization of white people against non-white people. And that the only thing the Muslims can be are the victims. Mm. Now, in reality, this is not a racial issue at all. Uh, a, uh, a, a white convert to Islam like John Walker Lind or Adam Gadan is no less lethal or dangerous to the United States of America and to our freedoms than is a, a Muslim from Saudi Arabia or Pakistan. Um, the, an Islamic jihadist from Saudi Arabia or Pakistan. And an Arab who is uh, a Muslim who rejects these aspects of Islam, uh, if, if any such actually exist, who reject it in any conscious way, or a Christian Arab, or a, a Pakistani Christian, these people are not threats to the United States. This is not a racial issue at all. This is an issue of an, a, a violent and supremacist ideology whose adherents avowedly are pursuing an agenda of trying to subvert the United States Constitution and ultimately to replace it with Islamic law. Wow. <clears throat> so Robert, I mean, this is a, a pretty beautiful day, but pretty upsetting news. Why are you trying to ruin everyone's mood? I mean, <laughs> is, there, is, there some, is there some way out of this? Is there some hope at the end of this? People always want a solution, and I never can give them one. There is no solving this problem. There's only managing it. But it can be managed. I mean, even on the level of Islamic law, Islamic law does not allow for the waging of jihad if there is no chance of victory. Mm. One of the reasons why they're so aggressive is because we're so weak. 
One of the reasons why they are advancing everywhere in the world today is not because of a lack of military power. We have the military power, but we're not using it properly. We're using it to build schools in Afghanistan that then get blown up by the Taliban. Mm. Instead of using it to interdict jihad movement and to stop jihad activity. And we do not have the cultural or societal or civilizational will in order to meet the challenge that the Islamic ideology presents. And they know that we're weak in this way. If we were to manifest a civilizational strength, a pride in who we are, as the exponents of the greatest civilization that has ever been known on the planet, and I say that unapologetically, that we have given the world notions of universal human rights that did not originate and could not have originated in an Islamic context and have been rejected by the Islamic states when they, when they went to Cairo after the United Nations issued the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is a very flawed document, but is clearly up here, uh, 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 clearly upholds Western notions, Judeo-Christian notions of the dignity of the individual and the freedom of conscience and the freedom of speech and so on. They went to Cairo and framed the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights, which submits all these rights to Sharia, which would effectively deny the legal equality of women with men, the, the, the freedom of speech, the freedom of conscience, and more. And so, we are facing this challenge, and we are not speaking up in our own defense. We are not saying, look, we are offering a better way of life. We offer a better civilization. We're not doing that. I mean, we went to Iraq and Afghanistan, and allowed constitutions to be inst to imposed in both places that say Sharia is the highest law of the land, that Islamic law is the law of the land here. We should be challenging those aspects of Islamic law that contradict otherwise universally held notions of human rights and saying we are the ones who are standing for them. And if we did that, even many Muslims would stand with us. But we do not have the civilizational courage to do it. And so we are, the, the Muslim groups that are Islamic supremacists are advancing their agenda because they see that they, we are weak and they can take advantage. So, so the solution here, though not necessarily a clear and obvious one, begins with becoming more aware becoming more courageous, being bold, and standing up to Sharia law. Yeah, and standing up for who we are, and not being ashamed of that. You know, it's it's a terrible thing now. It's racist and bigoted and, and Islamophobic to say that one civilization is better than the other. But let me ask you this. Would you have said in 1942 that Nazi Germany was morally equivalent to the United Kingdom or the United States? And so why is it that we cannot say today that a Sharia state like Saudi Arabia or Iran where people are being beheaded, where their hands are being amputated, where they're being stoned, is, is it, why do we have to say that that is absolutely the equivalent, morally, with a, with a state like the United States where people live in relative freedom? It's, 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 it's a moral abomination, that kind of moral equivalence, and it is killing us. And it's certainly potentially going to kill Rivka unless something happens. Quite so. If, uh, if we can close with this, I would like you to share if Rivka were watching this, what would you say to her? I would say, Rivka, we love you and we're never going to give up. And we, are, we know that there are very powerful forces arrayed against you because we know that they want to make you an example. And they want to show all the young girls, the young Muslim girls who are in your situation right now and who are watching your case very closely, we know that they want to show them there's no hope, there's no escape. And we know that on your side, there's a far more powerful force than any of the most, the most powerful forces arrayed against you. And so we are going to persist and we are never going to give up because just as much as they want to make you an example, we know that you are an example of the free soul, the free mind, the free conscience, the free heart. And so we know that as the truth is on our side, we will prevail. And God bless you. Robert Spencer, thank you so much. Thank you.